Y'all keep asking me how to make an eBay listing, so I'm going to finally do a series on everything you need to know to make your first listing. So I'm going to use this Forza game, Xbox One, to show you exactly what I would do to make this a listing. Spoiler alert, there is a listing up, so you can see the fruits of our labor after this and see that everything I show you is exactly how it shows up. So I'm just going to kind of daisy chain a bunch of these together. I'm not going to be able to do it all in three minutes, and what I'll do is I'll post like part two, and then a video reply to part two, which will have linked part two. So that way you can watch these sequentially and I'm gonna immediately post all these back to back to back until they're done. So if you don't see one yet, it'll be coming in the next couple minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll rip them all and I'll put them together in a compilation on YouTube that you can find in my bio and all that stuff. And you can watch all that if you want to that way. So without further ado, let's get started. And I'll be putting like pictures and screenshots behind me of what I'm explaining and what I'm doing for each part. So that way it's a little bit easier for you to follow along. You can see everything as I explain it too. Hopefully that helps. But before we get into just how to take your pictures, which is what this part's gonna be, what you wanna do is find something that you think is valuable. What do you think people wanna buy? One of the things that I know people always want is video games. Tons of people play it all over the world, so there's a market globally, there's a market locally, there's a market nationally, there's all kinds of markets for it. People like used games, people like new games, people like vintage games that they collect, people like to replace damaged ones, people want the new releases. There's all kinds of things, different genres. It truly is one of the things that is always in demand. So that's why we're gonna use Forza. So first things first, here's the first picture I always take. I do a top-down picture of just the actual case itself to show any cosmetic issues and show what the game is. This will not be our lead photo though when we go to make the listing, so bear that in mind. I'll show you the next photo. The second picture you're gonna wanna take is of just the bottom of the case itself. Here you can see there's no cracks in it or anything, so when the buyer gets it, if they're like, hey, there were cracks in it or whatever, and it's on this part of the case or whatnot, then I can see, okay, what were my pictures? Does it match up with what they have? And this is extremely rare. Sometimes it happens in the mail, but you can kind of tell based on the level of damage if that probably happened in the mail or if a buyer was trying to sabotage, which unfortunately does happen on very rare occasions. I've had it maybe a handful of times in the hundreds and hundreds of things I've sold. So don't get too paranoid about it, but this is a great CYA. So I'll show you the third picture next. Same type concept. I flip it on its side and you can see where it opens. Again, no damage or anything like that. That way the buyer can see it. Picture four, we're gonna just have the top of it. Same thing as we did with the bottom, just checking for any cracks or anything like that, see why it. Picture five is just gonna be the spine of the game. So you can see here, no issues with it. Everything looks good, making sure we're good there. Now we're looking at the back of the game because it usually has a lot of information on it about the game. The person might wanna read it. It might actually be legible. Most of it's not gonna be like the fine print, but you can see all the big things you can read. Now notice, I center all my pictures and I make sure the margins are every bit the same on either side of each other. This isn't something you have to do, but if someone's gonna to wanna to buy something from you, they wanna see that it looks like it should, this will help to make your listing stand out. The next picture I'm gonna to wanna to take is just an inside look at the actual case itself. So as you can see behind me, the disc is centered, so that way you can read it and you can see that there is no booklet there, but you have the clips in that aren't broken off if you wanna put a booklet in there and there's no cosmetic damage or any sort of cracking. So part of why you wanna have your disc centered is because people buy with their eyes. You've heard people eat with their eyes, people buy with their eyes. If something is off center, it doesn't mean that the disc is bad or anything like that and people won't think it's bad, but it looks sloppy. It looks not professional and no, you're not like a professional reseller. Some people are, but to me, it just looks so much cleaner and better like this, especially again, I have it centered, I have it flush, I have the margins right. Just the little things go a long way. Now the picture of the disc. This one's kind of tricky because you can get reflections in it. So you could have like a reflection of your big old head on it. You don't want that. So what I do is I'll kind of set the disc on the ground. I'll show you. You can see our disc on the floor. Now you can see that my shadow from my head is over top of it. And if I lean into it, you can see where the ceiling and the wall meet. And you can also see my hand, you can see my phone, you can see my face. We don't want that in our picture. So what we wanna do is we wanna get at an angle and get close to it so we can take a photo of it without any sort of shadow. So you might need to kind of contort yourself to get away from that, take your picture, and then we fix the margins of the photo and we get a nice clean one like this so they can see if there's any sort of issues or like any gashes in it that you can definitely see. Now there's gonna be little nicks and dings. That's on you to figure out what the condition of the disc is. So for me, I always go one condition lower than I think it could be argued. So if I think it's in very good condition, I'm gonna put it as good. If I think it's in good, I'm gonna put it as acceptable. Unless it's like free and clear, this is very evidently good or acceptable. Most games, hear me when I say this, are going to be good or acceptable. Almost nothing is like new. I never will use like new unless I just took the cellophane off. That is the only time because anything that's been used is no longer like new. Hear that again. Nothing used is like new if it's been used more than like 10 seconds. That's just how it goes. You never want to do that because buyer expectations change based on how you're selling it. 
always leave someone pleasantly surprised versus the other way. And you're not gonna make substantially more money unless it's the difference between new and used. That's the only way it changes. Now, if I have cellophane on it and it's a little bit torn and it's new, I'll show it's new. But look, there's a little bit of cellophane tearing, but you can see it's never been opened, never been tampered with. That is different. So just keep that in mind. So once you take a picture of the disc itself and the condition of it, you're gonna wanna immediately load it in your console because it's gonna take some time to download the game. Once the game is downloaded, you're gonna see a screen like this, which is the load screen before you launch into the game. Take a picture of this with the actual disc case itself on top of whatever table it is that's by your TV or whatnot. So that way they can see, okay, this is the same disc from the same case and here it is working. Then we're gonna do one of gameplay, but I'll show you what it looks like when you initially load it in, where it's gonna start downloading and why you might wanna do other listing pictures like the ones we just took of the cases and discs for other ones you'll do next while it's loading, because it takes a while. I'm just gonna put this in so you can see kind of a general idea of about how long this takes to download and why the order I do stuff in is the order I do stuff in. So I just put our disc in, as you can see, and it is currently going. Look at the time, though. That's how long it'll take to fully complete. Now, it doesn't need to get all the way to the end, which is 100%. It's only at 0.7. The speed's in the top right. The little carrot there is when you can start it. Half the time, it doesn't even work then. It makes you wait longer to be able to actually run it. But that's how much it's done. It hasn't even gotten a whole gigabyte yet. and needs 31.87 of them. So three hours, 14 minutes. We're not waiting for that. Lucky for us, I have a picture from earlier today when I went ahead and downloaded it. The reason that it was redoing it on my console was because once I get these pictures and test everything, I wipe it from my console. I do too many games like this where I would not have any space left on it. So I do it, I wipe it, we're done. So this is a picture that clearly shows, here's some gameplay, here it is working, all that. The disc case is on top, this is a picture. This is gonna be our second picture. Our lead picture and first picture is going to be just a picture of the load screen, whatever you wanna call it, the home screen, main menu, all that. And then this is gonna be the second picture. And then sequentially, we're gonna have the pictures in order that I showed initially of the top of you know the disc case and all that, all the way down to the disc itself. So that's the way I do it, but I'll show those in more detail when we make our listing themselves. So now I'm gonna show on eBay, how do you actually start making a listing? So we'll go. First thing you wanna do, log into your eBay account and then go into the little search bar and just type up Forza Horizon 4 Xbox One. You're gonna to wanna to say what the actual console it's with is and you're gonna to wanna to say what the game title is and it'll give you a nice little drop down you can do. If it says video game, it'll have like a hyphen and then video game kind of like highlighted where you can see right here, you're gonna to wanna to click that. That's going to pre-populate a lot of the stuff for you and give you all kinds of different options and stuff like that where you can select which game it is. Is it Forza Horizon 3? Is it Forza Horizon 4? Is it, you know, brand new? Is it acceptable? What's the condition? All that stuff. So you wanna do that and I'll show you that next. On the left hand side of the web page, if you scroll down, you're gonna see game name. So like I said, Forza Horizon 4, you're gonna to wanna to check that off because that's the one we're doing. Based on what I saw, it looks like it's between good and very good. So you know what I'm doing? I'm just doing good. So I check off good and that's the condition that we're gonna sell it in. But we wanna see what corollary ones that are Forza Horizon 4 in good condition have been listed at. And then there's one more part we wanna look at first before we start pricing ours. It is very, very, very important. You look at what it has actually sold for. People will list things any type of way. They will list it for whatever. They'll have a box of rocks and be like, $300, I know what I got. No one knows what they got. Never, ever, ever price anything based on what people have it listing at. Always look at what it sold for recently. So we go to completed items and then we go to sold items. Both of those need to be true because that means the transaction went through and it was sold at that price. There might be outliers where some people will buy their own things at an inflated price. Use your judgment. If someone has sold Forza for $300 and most are saying $15, it's $15. So I'll show you the next step. Once you've updated all your criteria, it's gonna give you a bunch of different things of Forza Horizon 4 in good condition that have sold. So if you can see behind me, $13.95, $14.99, $14.99, sequentially based on when it sold. So these are the most recent sales that I can see. So November 2nd, I know it recently happened, so that means that price likely hasn't changed much from this. If I go further back, it gives you a further look back to see how it's trended, but we don't care about how it trended, we care about where it's at now. So currently, it looks like it's selling at about 14 to $15. However, if you notice something, free shipping, free shipping, the one underneath this is also free shipping, it cut off, but those three have free shipping. I don't do free shipping. So shipping's gonna come out to probably about $5 is what I tend to just assume on the higher end of the scale, but for first class mail, it's gonna be anywhere between like, $4.50 ish to like $6 ish. So I just assume kind of $5, all that good stuff. So what I want to do $9.95 for my listing with shipping. So that could work for me, could work against me. People like free shipping. They always like to feel like they get some for free. However, 
you can make a little bit of margin on shipping and you're not you know up the creek without a paddle if you have a big shipping cost because i do international so international shipping is like ten dollars at the least and it can get relatively expensive but again if your dimensions are smaller for your package or anything like that and your weight is smaller it's going to cost you less to ship it so that cost gets passed on to either you or the customer. So just think about that when you're doing it. But I'm gonna do $9.95 for the actual cost of the item and then whatever shipping populates to based on where the buyer is located geographically. So I'll show you the next part of kind of how we use these. So I like that top one. I'm going to highlight the actual listing itself and open it in a new tab. It's hard to read, but this says sell one like this. Now I could have hit that in the last screen if you noticed that was an option. However, I always check to see what was the country of origin of the sale. Now, why does this matter? I'm from the United States, which helps a lot with reselling things because a lot of sales come from the United States on eBay. Now, the thing about this is if it was from Canada and I opened this up and I saw it was from Canada, then I wouldn't want to do this because it's going to do everything in Canadian dollars, not in US dollars. So it messes a lot of stuff up. It sometimes tries to take me to like the Canadian eBay interface. I don't want to do that. So I make sure, yep, it looks like this sold from North Carolina. That's in America. I'm going to use that. So. That's what I'm doing, and I'm gonna go ahead and open in a new link the sell one like this from this listing. So I'm just gonna go in order of what you're gonna run into and see based on doing that. It's going to keep the exact same title of the listing that you're selling one like. I don't like that one, so I'm gonna go ahead and use kind of just the one that I use template-wise from something I'm trying to sell that was Call of Duty Black Ops, I wanna say three. So I'll open that listing up in another tab, and I will actually change the ending of this. I wanna keep the beginning because the beginning has the actual name of the game, but I do kind of an ending that's different, so I'll show you that in the next video. So if you look at listings I've already done, you can see behind me Call of Duty Black Ops 3 right up there. So I'm going to go ahead and open that in a new tab, and we're going to take not only the title ending, but also the description, which will be the next part. So I'll show you that now. So all I'm going to go ahead and do is we're just going to scroll down, and we're going to take the ending of this listing, copy it over, and then we're going to paste it over top of the other listing that we're making now. Return to the new listing, select the end of it like so, paste over top of that the listing ending that we actually want. And you got a brand spanking new title, baby. So as you can see behind me, I just do tested and cleaned and then whatever console it is. So I try to keep it simple. Putting it in all caps, I found helps. It grabs attention and all that. But you don't want to do the whole thing because it gets obnoxious. So you pick and choose. You don't need to just do a deluge of information in your title. You're going to be fine. I know they say more is better. They actually tell you that right there. Hey, make it longer. You don't need to do that. You just need to make sure your pictures are on point. It grabs attention. Your title makes sense. It's easy to read. Because if it's all over the place and stuff like that, yeah, you can have, you know, SQL and, you know, SEO and stuff like that where you're trying to make sure that whatever it is that you are doing search optimization so people can find it, all that stuff. If they're looking for this game, they'll find your game. So don't worry about it. I'll show you more parts that we're going to do. So when you scroll down, it's going to have a part that says, hey, you need to tell us what the condition is. And as you know, we're going to say good condition. So I'm going to go ahead and hit change right up here in the corner. Gives you a drop down menu. I'm going to select good. We've now selected good. So we're all good to go. And you can see it also has the game name. Make sure that's correct. And then the platform, make sure that's correct. Feel free to change it if it's not. But that's part of why we search how we did with the game name, the console we're looking for and all that good stuff. If you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see recommended. So like the name implies, you don't need any of this stuff, but you can add it if you want. So you got publisher, genre, rating, region code. Now, I don't like to have a bunch of stuff in this because it kind of makes it almost too niche sometimes. So let's say someone thinks that a certain game they're looking for is rated T for teen. If you have yours as E for everyone, they might not find yours. You're good with just the basic stuff that you need. And from there, you should be good. If it's competitively priced, if you take your pictures well, if you have a good title, You'll be okay. So I'll show you the drop down for more recommended and you can kind of see what else you can get into. Release year is another thing that you can see and MPN. And if you scroll even more, you get to additional, which is even more things that you can add. So you got video game series, features, subgenre, country, region of manufacture, and then you got more details, which I'll go ahead and open up and show you those. And you can see already it's getting really into the weeds. If you're in California, you need to do something with that. If there's something that it has issues with, is it a custom bundle? Manufacturer warranty come with it? What's the UPC? Now UPC can be helpful because that's the exact product code. So if you search that, it will come up exactly what the product is, no issues with it. So it's the exact copy of the game. This is exactly what you're getting. I might recommend that. That's the only one of these I might recommend that you look into doing if it's not there already. Now the next thing you're gonna see when you scroll down is your pictures. You already know we got our pictures, so I just go add from computer and I just airdrop it from my phone, but there is a way to add it from your mobile device, which I will show you all this stuff for pictures in the next video. So when I airdrop something to myself, it just goes to my downloads. So I just click the top one, hit shift, click the bottom one while holding shift and it selects them all. So I just say upload or enter and it goes ahead and puts them all into the eBay listing. 
Now here's what it's gonna look like. Notice that they're not in the order that we took them in. So I'm gonna rearrange them to the order that I said earlier that it would be. So you might've thought it weird that I would take a picture of just kind of the load or beginning menu screen of the game itself, but notice something. Most of the game pictures that are gonna be the lead pictures for this actual video game itself are gonna look like this. This makes it stand out and shows people this thing works. A lot of the time when you're buying something online, you're skeptical if it works. You wanna know that it works. You don't wanna waste your money. You don't wanna have someone you know, finesse you or scam you or whatnot. You don't have to deal with that headache. You start thinking, what if? This takes the what if out of it. And then a gameplay picture right after, that really makes sure. So then you get through all the normal pictures of the actual, you know, disc case itself and everything like that, which is much more in depth than others do. And a picture of the disc, I'm feeling good about that. That's the one I'd pick. So that's part of why I do my listing pictures based on what I personally would want to see as a buyer. Scroll down, next thing we got, description. It says optional, don't make this optional. So what I do is there's a period at the end of this that always looks weird to me. So I'm going to delete that and then I'm going to hit enter and enter again. So that way I'm going to be like a space between the title and then I'll put my description between that kind of like, I guess, return that we hit. Here's a picture to show just kind of what I'd explained above. We're going to go over to our Black Ops 3 listing and we're just going to copy the description that we had there and we're going to paste that over into the description for the new listing. Like so. So this is what it formats to initially. There's going to be an extra like thing of space at the bottom. I'm going to delete that and it'll take away a line of space that's just kind of dead space. Like so. It puts it all nice and succinct. You don't have to scroll or anything. It's all right there. But notice something. There's this in photos, the disc has some, you know, scratches, stuff like that, whatever. This one doesn't have that, but the Black Ops disc did. So I'm going to remove that, highlight that, take it out of there. So that is going to be our new description. Now, feel free to read through what I have as a description. I'll read it if you can't actually see it. So I say, tested and works great. Disc reads and plays as it should. In good condition, some cosmetic blemishes evident in photos. Disc and case have been thoroughly cleaned inside and out. All sales are final. I sell things similar to and different from this, so have a look at my other listings. I hope that you have a great day, and I look forward to hearing from you here soon with a smiley face. If you want to use something like that, feel free to. It's short, sweet, succinct. It's easy to read. It's just like how people say to build your resume with stuff. If you can just look at it quickly and get the information you need, you don't need a bunch of gobbledygook. You don't need to be like, this is a great racing game. No one cares. They know if they're looking for the game, they're looking for that game. So just keep it simple. Make sure they know it works. They're much more likely to buy it and want it if you keep it like that and keep it in there. And it's a CYA in case they're like, hey, well, I thought I could return it. No, you can't. That's right there in the listing, and there's not a bunch of stuff in the listing where they'd be like, well, they're not going to see that because there's not a lot in there. You keep it from getting convoluted, and you save yourself a lot of headache, and then you tell them, hey, it works. See the pictures. Everything's cool. So I'll show you the next part coming up next. Once you scroll past description, you're going to see pricing. Now, obviously, it's going to give you a default. It's going to do seven-day auction, $6.90 start. That's based on what it's trending at, what they think it'll sell at. Do not do auction. Auctions are terrible. Only do auctions if it's something that's a really rare item or like a niche item that you think a bidding war would happen with. Nine times out of ten, though, I found people don't even pay. So you have to relist it, and it just wastes everyone's time. So don't do that. Hit change up here. We're going to go ahead and see what we can do. Notice, it gives you an option for buy now. Now you can do buy now instead, or you can do buy now in addition to auction. So you can set your auction price and then select a buy now. So if you want to start your auction price at $5 and you want to have $10 be your buy now price, where if someone's like, hey, you know what? I want that right now. I don't even want to let anyone else get it. I'm going to do it at $10. The only catch is that if someone starts bidding for auction, buy now becomes null and void. You cannot use it. So I think that's trash. I think it should be that at any point you could do that because if bidding becomes something where you go over top, of the $10 threshold or something, you think, well, I could have just done the buy now or whatever, but it's like asking someone to see into the future what they think the price is going to be. It's, it's trash. So I'm going to toggle off auction, which is going to by default toggle on buy now because that's the only other option. So obviously that just occurred and you can see up there, it has $13 and 90 cents as what it thinks you should sell it at. If you're going to go ahead and do it by a buy it now. Now, I don't think that that's going to be the price based on what we talked about. $13 90 cents is right around what we saw if you do free shipping. We're not doing free shipping in this case, so I'm taking it down to $9.95, which I'll show you now, like so. But you see that it has more options. We're gonna hit that and we're gonna see what else we can do. So more options, we go down and it says allow offers. Do you want to allow people to make you offers? Now this is by default toggled on and it goes to about half of what you have your buy now set at. So this is $5 since you know half of $9.95 is something weird. So they're just gonna do $5. Now you also have schedule a listing start time. So you can schedule when this listing goes live to time it up for an optimal time of whatever. Usually that's only gonna matter for auctions. If it's a buy it now, who really cares when it starts? Yeah, it might matter more so when it first initially goes of how much it keeps getting pushed, fine. 
I never care. I list it the second I have it is what it is. Then quantity. Let's say you have two of these guys. I tend to shy away from quantity because to me, I want to make sure that the pictures are exactly what they'll get. So that way no one is going to come at me and be like, well, you said, unless it's brand new, I really, really, really do not recommend using quantity. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe out this $5. I'll allow offers, but I'm not going to do it where it's going to be the $5. I'm going to just make it whatever offer they want is whatever they can do. So when I say the $5, I realize I poorly explained that. That is the minimum. So anything below that, it auto rejects. I don't think that's good. I don't like that. I understand that, yeah, people can send insultingly low offers. It rarely happens. And, you know, maybe it'll keep them in the game wanting to bid more or, you know, send you more offers that are better if you keep it at zero. So as I said in the last video, I just went ahead and took out the minimum offer amount. That way anyone can offer any amount and I can decide, do I want to do it or do I not want to do it? Now we're on to shipping and I want to show you guys something about shipping. So it's going to default to something of what that buyer put, I think of what the weight was, what the dimensions are for the package and stuff. Now notice, it has three different parts, length, width, height. Now, if you wanna do international, you need all three. Now let's say that you have a bubble mailer, right? Mine's nine by six. However, if I just do nine by six, it lets me do domestic, totally fine. But I think, and I might be wrong, it takes me out of first class, which is the cheapest, and then it goes priority mail, which is the next best, because I usually do just the post office, right? So USPS, you can do UPS, you can do FedEx, you can do all kinds of shipping. So if you want to do international, it needs three dimensions. So just put one for the third dimension, length with height. So, you know, obviously the bowl miller is not an inch high, but you know, you put that. So nine by six by one instead of nine by six to allow you to, I guess, unlock international shipping. It's like a little feature. So that is kind of where that's at. And it gives an estimate of how much that will cost the buyer. Now, when I update it with four ounces, which is how much it actually weighs, and then nine by six by one, even though it's more than seven by four by four, like in some of the dimensions and stuff like that, this is going to go down. So what I do is I'm gonna hit change and I'm gonna show you guys beforehand of what the actual, you know, way that I measure it is on the scale that I have. So we'll do that right now. Bubble mailers are great for something like this. This is what I'm talking about. This is truly just nine by six, but nine by six by one is what I'm gonna do it as. So we're gonna wait for that to zero out. So I'm gonna do this and I don't need to put this inside of it, but I'll just set it on top. And that way, I know that, okay, 2.9, I always put four ounces because, you know, if I put the label on and stuff like that, that's so close. See, you never want to go over. So four gives me wiggle room. It doesn't change how much it costs. But there are times when how much something weighs, if it's five ounces versus four ounces, I forget what the threshold is, it'll increase the minimum and the maximum by like 50 cents. So the lower you can keep this, the better, but never lie about it because they will actually hit you with a penalty when the post office weighs it itself. So you never want to do that. And just like I said, I updated the numbers and you can see that the first class amount of how much it'll likely cost went down as well. But we scroll down and we can see that you can list a second option. So let's say you might want to offer FedEx or UPS or USPS, not first class, but priority mail. Whatever you want to do, you can do that. Then you can also do local pickup at the bottom. You can do international shipping, all that stuff. So I usually don't do a second shipping option unless it's something where it's really heavy. So I might do like a flat rate box or priority mail. Flat rate is flat rate. It's if it fits, it ships for that flat rate. You only want to do that if it's a heavy item. These are not heavy items. You do not want to do that here. So I'm just going to do the first class one, but we're going to add international shipping and I don't do local pickup. What that is, is you can scan like a barcode or something when they meet you in person, if they're close to you. I don't rock with that, so I'll show you that next. If y'all can't tell by how many parts this is, this is taking me two and a half hours, so I'm gonna try to get done with this soon. So if you can see here, international shipping is what I'm gonna hit next, and we're gonna see what our options are. So there's a couple things. There's the global shipping program, there is eBay International Standard Delivery, eBay International Standard Delivery is the only thing I ever use. I've heard not great things about shipping program. I wouldn't recommend it, but the rates kind of fluctuate. It's weird. So rock with standard delivery. That's what I do. Or if you have to, you can do any sort of other thing. If it's out of weight, if it's too large, all kinds of stuff, because there's dimension requirements, what have you. But I'm definitely going to go ahead and select eBay International Standard. As you can see, that's up there. I didn't do the local pickup, as you know. I told you I'm not big on that. So this just kind of gives you blurbs on stuff. Do you want to offer returns? I have no. Do you want to donate a portion to charity? I don't do it. I don't know which one. I don't. Only charities I donate are the ones I know. So basically, if you go, you can list it. You can preview how it'll look, or you can save it for later as a draft. So sometimes it gets weird if you put all your stuff in at once, and it'll like gray this out. Just save it as a draft. Open it up. It'll immediately let you go ahead and save it as, or I mean, post it as a listing. So you should be okay. So I'm going to go ahead, hit list it. So we list it, and then it says, do you want to boost your item to help it sell faster? Yes. 
I recommend yes, and here's why. It only incurs the expense if it sells. 6.4% of the total sale amount is what you end up paying. It's like 50 cents, 70 cents or whatever for something like this. That's not that bad. So I'm gonna say yes, because if it helps me move it, it's worth taking a little bit out of my margin to move things so much quicker, because otherwise it can get buried in the search results and the good thing about this, you only incur this expense if they find it through the ad feature. If it's not in the ad feature and they find it just through an organic search, you don't even pay it. Half the time, I don't even pay this. Every listing I have is yes to this. So I hit promote listing now because half the time, I don't even have to pay it. Success. So now it's gonna tell us, hey, here's what we got. Do you wanna view your listing, revise your listing, or just go to your eBay? Let's take a look at our listing. Let's see what we got. So this is what the listing looks like from my end. There's all kinds of stuff here. Up here, you're not really gonna be able to see, but from here down is what you see. So you got our title, shows how much it is, all that. You can buy it now, you can send an offer. There's all kinds of things. You can toggle through and scroll through all the pictures. You can blow this up by clicking on it. It shows everything. And it even has this little like square thing that you can go over top of it and it just like makes it even bigger on parts. If you're really curious, like is there a crack there? You can look. Then we scroll down, you can see all this stuff. Here's how much your shipping likely is, all kinds of stuff like that. Here's different ways you can pay. And then down here we have description and we have our shipping and payment stuff. So if we look at description, it's gonna have all kinds of info. It has all the info that we entered and everything like that and the description we typed out, which is pretty nice. But if we go to shipping and payments, it's got all kinds of info. Here's how much you'll probably pay. Here's your options, everything like that. Everything you know is there. And then we got stuff like your return policy, payment details, all that. And then the seller themselves is down there. If you want to view their profile, if you want to contact them, you can do all that stuff. So I hope this helps. Happy selling.